Order. Questions for oral answer. Mr. Saktiandi, Supat. Mr. Speaker, question one, please. Over the long term, real wage growth should track productivity growth in order to be sustainable. This is because if real wage growth outstrips productivity growth for an extended period of time, businesses will be at risk of losing their competitiveness and potentially be forced to scale back or close their operations. Over the past two decades, real wages have grown broadly in tandem with productivity at the overall economy level. Specifically from 2001 to 2017, Real wages for resident workers grew by 1.5% per annum on the back of productivity growth of 2.1% per annum. In recent years, however, real wage growth has outstripped productivity growth. From 2011 to 2017, real wages for resident workers rose by 1.9% per annum, while productivity grew by only 1.1% per annum over the same period. However, there are differences across sectors. In particular, domestically oriented sectors like construction and other services industries grew, saw real wages rise faster than productivity between 2011 and 2017. This was in part due to labour market tightness, which had led to upward pressures on wages, and also weak or negative productivity growth in these sectors. Meanwhile, even though the sluggish global economic environment had weighed on the productivity performance of outward-oriented sectors over this period, real wage growth in these sectors was generally still supported by positive productivity growth. Indeed, in sectors such as manufacturing, wholesale trade and finance and insurance, real wages grew, rose in tandem with productivity on the back of their relatively strong productivity performance. However, in other sectors such as transportation and storage, and accommodation, real wage growth exceeded productivity growth. Against this backdrop, it is crucial that we press on with our productivity drive in order to maintain our competitiveness globally, while enabling continued improvement of Singaporeans' wages and living standards. In this regard, we are taking a targeted sector-specific approach to raising productivity through the ITMs, the Industry Transformation Maps. For example, under the hotel ITM, the Singapore Tourism Board and Singapore Hotel Association have launched the Hotel Innovation Challenge to crowdsource innovative technologies that can improve hotels' productivity and enhance the guest experience, such as facial recognition check-in. The government has also provided assistance to firms through schemes designed to help them enhance their capability and productivity. These schemes have, been, have seen some early signs of success. For example, Firms that tap on the Capability Development Grant, the CDG, managed by Enterprise Singapore for capability improvement projects between 2005 and 2012, experience a 9.3% increase in revenue on average over time. Productivity improvement projects had the largest impact, raising firms' revenue by 12.4% compared to 7.8% for technology innovation projects and an average of 6.7% for the remaining project areas. Similarly, firms that tap on the SME's Go Digital program, formerly known as iSprint, for IT solutions to automate their business functions between 2010 and 2013, experienced a 3.1% increase in their revenue on average over time. Maintaining a close partnership with industry and unions is also important in order for businesses and their workers to benefit from productivity improvements. For example, NTUC has partnered various companies on measures that raise their productivity and competitiveness. The resultant productivity gains are then shared with the workers in these companies, such as through allowances or payments. As a specific example, the Inclusive Growth Program, or the IGP, administered by E2I, co-funds companies to embark on productivity improvement projects. The companies are in turn required to share the productivity gains with their workers through a rise in wages. The government is committed to continue to work with businesses and the unions to help businesses improve their productivity and ensure that the productivity gains are shared with workers through higher wages.
Andy. Mr. Speaker, thank you. I'd like to thank SMS for the answer. Uh, it's glad to know, I'm glad to know that the real wage growth is actually 1.9% and uh, productivity growth is 1.1% and so there's a distinct gap there. Uh, just like to ask uh, one, supplementary one or two supplementary questions. First one, uh, in terms of uh, MTI, uh, can, they share a bit more, can you share a bit more about the uh, productivity or wage growth outlook over the next few years? Because yesterday I asked about the concerns for interest rate uh, going up over the next uh, year or so as well as um, what it means for uh, wage growth outlook from MTI's perspective. Second question is about concerns about wage, wage stagnation uh, concerns on, on the ground when I talk to residents. I mean, like you mentioned, it's not a broad-based growth, uh, wage growth uh, outlook. Uh, how do you allay some of the wage stagnation concerns for specific sectors? Like you mentioned, some sectors are affected more than others. Thanks. Mr. Speaker, I thank the member for his questions. I think the, the uh, key is that uh, wage growth will not be uniform across all sectors and fundamental to driving wage growth, sustainable wage growth would be to actually to improve productivity. So it is uh, one of the important tenets of the ITM that we want to have help our companies to better increase productivity by leveraging on technology such that the companies can actually make better profit margins while controlling their costs from various pressures. And I think an example of how we can help some of these wage gains translate to benefits from the workers' wages would be in programs like the IGPs, for example. But importantly, I think we need to also put in place a lot of framework to help our workers actually reskill themselves, upskill themselves, so that they themselves can be productive. So several initiatives have already been in play. First, there is a skills framework that uh, individual workers can then leverage on this skill framework to continue to upskill themselves working with their employers. The other scheme which the government has put forth is actually the Work Pro Job Redesign Grant. The grant actually provides up to 300,000 incentives to help companies create physically easier, safer and smarter jobs, especially for the older workers aged above 50, because this is the group where there's probably genuine concern about wage stagnation and, uh, and also job prospects. And by using such schemes and grants, we can encourage companies to help level up the workers and in turn, companies can benefit from having more experienced workers, especially higher productivity ones. Finally, there's also the scheme called the progressive wage model, especially in certain sectors which are traditionally low wage. And this model is a productivity-based wage progression pathway that helps to increase the wages of workers through upgrading skills and improving productivity. So far, this has been implemented in three sectors, the cleaning, security and landscape sectors, and, but we do see that uh, there is a need probably to do more for other sectors and MOS Man from Manpower Sam Tan mentioned during his COS speech in this year that MOM is ready to support tripartite partners to develop and adopt progressive wage models voluntarily for other sectors. And NTUC has announced recently that the labour movement has begun conducting surveys with F&B workers as part of early efforts to see if this can be included in the progressive wage models as well. So there are multiple approaches, but fundamentally it all hinges on raising the productivity of our workers. Mr. Sakyandi. I just want to follow up quickly uh, about my question about the MTI's uh, real wage growth outlook uh, by sectors. What, which sectors do you think will be affected most over the next three to five years if you can share it? The, we do see that certain sectors will have uh, a lot more chances for manpower growth in terms of number of jobs created and these growth sectors will of course be where the wages will be probably a lot more competitive as well. Uh, one of the sectors that we believe to be a very good attractive sector that can take in a lot of people with good jobs and a good pay will be in the area of the wholesale trade sector which is very diverse. This will include <laughs> sectors that uh, deal with commodity trading but also trading in many other sectors, uh, in other areas, for example, in the logistics sector, which is also a key sector in this group. Um, of course, the other growth sectors will be in the manufacturing space, precision engineering, for example. The semiconductor industry is still continuing to do well. So I think these will be areas in which I think workers will continue to see specific gains there. <laughs> 